this video, I'm going to show how to design and simulate patch antenna. In the first part, I will go over the design steps of patch antenna using formulas so you can design patch antenna at any frequency. In the second part, I will show how to simulate and check the result inside ANSYS HFSS. Before um, designing any antenna, there are three things to consider. Resonant frequency, substrate height, and materials relative permittivity. As you can see, these are the main parameters affecting the antenna performance. I'm going to design a microstrip patch antenna that operates at 866 MHz, which is placed on top of a 1.5 mm FR4 substrate. Next, using the formula, you can find the width and the length of the patch antenna and the ground or substrate dimension as well as the feed line. Once you calculated uh, these parameters, you can construct your antenna geometry inside HFSS and set up a simulation. Once we calculated the dimension of our antenna, we are going to construct the geometry, starting by creating the substrate in the ribbon. Click on draw box and make a freehand drawing. In the command tab, we are going to position our antenna element. And in the attribute tab, you can change the name, set the material uh, properties, and uh, play with the color and transparency. We are going to assign variables to different parameters of the, our design uh, in order to uh, fully parameterize our design for future if you want to perform parametric analysis uh, or optimization. For the width, we are introducing a WG and for the length, we are introducing LG. Theorem. Now for the X size, uh, so once you added these parameters, you need to specify value, assign value for each of these variables. So for WG, our, um, the width of our substrate is 165 millimeter, and the length of our substrate is 140 millimeter from our calculation. For the X size, we put WG and uh, Y size, we put LG. And for the substrate thickness, we are going to introduce another variable sub thickness and uh, specify the value, which is 1.5 millimeter. Click on apply to update our design and then go to attribute tab. Here you can specify the name of our permittivities. So it's substrate. And uh, we can assign a variable. So search by name, uh, it's FR4 material. So we can assign it to our design. Uh, we can change the transparency to 0 0.8 and click on apply and then OK to close the properties window. In order to fit everything into one screen, you can press Ctrl D. In the next step, we are going to create our ground plane. So uh, since we want to fully parameterize our model, instead of drawing a sheet, we are going to create a face from the bottom face or our substrate. To, so to change the selection, uh, click on F on your keyboard to uh, do the face selection and uh, click on bottom face. Uh, of your substrate and right click, edit, and surface, create object from face. So this creates an object in the modeler 
tree, you can see that this uh, sheet has been added to our design. Uh, we are going to change the name to round thing. So we can uh, easily uh, locate it in our modular tree uh, when you are assigning the name to each of the primitives that you create. So it will help you track those uh, later on. So once we created our substrate and uh, the ground plane, the next step would be creating the antenna element. So the antenna element is uh, placed on top of the substrate. To create this antenna element, click on draw rectangle and make a freehand drawing. And in the command tab for the position, so we are again going to assign variables to the width and the length of our antenna element. W over 2 and minus F over 2. And since it's placed on top of the substrate, so we need to use the substrate thickness variable. Now we need to add value for our dimension of our antenna. So the width is 105 millimeter and the length is 80 millimeter. And for the X size, W, and for the Y size, we have M. And click on apply to update the antenna element. If you want to change the color and change the name, we can change it to hatch and change the color to yellow. Click on apply and press OK. Now you can see that the antenna element is added to our design. Next, we are going to add our feed line. So once you calculate the feed points, you know how far you need to go inside the antenna element and then create the gap for matching purposes. So to create the feed line, again, we uh, do a freehand drawing by creating a sheet and we can uh, go to the command tab and Place it at minus W, the width of the feet line, divide by 2, and then LG, divide by 2, minus 5 millimeter, and substrate, at, it is also placed on top of the substrate. So for the width of the feet line, it's 3 millimeter. So the, uh, the size of our feed line for the X size, we have WF. And for the Y size, we have the length of our feed line. So we will introduce another variable. Uh, LF is 40 millimeter. And click on OK, click on Apply. This will update our design. If you go to the attribute tab, you can change the name to feed line and change the color to yellow as well. In the next step, we are going to add the gaps. So again, you can do a freehand drawing in the command window. You can input minus WF over to LG over 2 minus 5 millimeter and substrate thickness. And for the um, X size, we are going to introduce a new variable gap, which is minus 1.4 millimeter. And for the Y size, we have minus LF. 
click on apply to add the to update the design and you can go to the attribute and change the name to gap or future reference click on ok now since we have gap on both sides we can take advantage of the symmetry so here if you click on through mirror as your gap is already highlighted in order to create the second gap we can use the the symmetry so click on through mirror and if you select the midpoint of your feed line you can place it right next to the feed line on the other side the next step we are going to unite the feed line with our antenna element and remove the uh, the two gaps that we have created so in the modeler tree click on the feed line and the antenna element and click on unite in the ribbon this will combine the feed line and an, our antenna element now we are going to subtract the the gap from our antenna element in the modeler tree, click on the feed line and click on gap and gap one. In the ribbon, click on subtract. This will open up the subtract window. In the blank parts, uh, we will have the primitives that is going to remain. And in the tool parts, we are going to have the primitives that is going to be removed and uh, subtracted from our geometry. So I'll click on OK. And you can see that the two gaps has been created in our antenna element. If you press Ctrl D, it will zoom everything into one screen. Now to create the port geometry, we are going to change the selection mode to edge selection and uh, click on the edge of our feet line as well as the substrate height by holding the Ctrl key. And uh, from the ribbon, you can uh, create object from edge. You can see that uh, we have created two lines out of the feed line and the substrate height. Now we are going to sweep along these two lines in order to create a sheet to represent our port connecting our antenna element to our round plane. So click on the feed line object from and then substrate object edge and we are going to sweep along path and then click on OK. This way we are going to add it. So if we make any changes to the width of our feed line or the substrate thickness, our port geometry will be updated automatically here you can change the name in the properties window you can change the name to port so you can track it later on uh, more easily Control d it will zoom out and fit everything into one screen so the next step would be um, assigning boundary condition so we can hide our radiation box uh, we need to assign finite conductivity boundary condition to our antenna element and ground plane so let's select the um, antenna feed line and right click assign boundary and assign finite conductivity so since we are using copper we can keep the uh, conductivity as a default and click on ok we can do the same thing for the ground plane highlight it and then right click but assign boundary condition finite conductivity and 
click on OK. So if you check in the project manager, we have assigned bound the condition to our antenna element as well as our ground plane. In the next step, we are going to add our excitation. So you can select the port from the geometry or from the modular tree and right click, assign excitation port, lump port. Uh, so when you are assigning lump port, you need to use one of the conductors as a reference plane. So you need to check mark the ground plane as your reference and click on OK. Now, if you check the project manager and expand the excitation, you can see that um, the lump port excitation has been added to our design and uh, the terminal where the, uh, the voltage is applied to our element, uh, you can also uh, see that. Uh, now that we added our excitations and boundary condition, uh, the next step would be setting up the solution. Uh, in the project manager, right click on analysis, add solution setup and click on advanced. Um, so here in the driven solution setup, window, you need to specify the operating frequency, which is 866 megahertz and a maximum number of uh, passes. So HFSS uses the automatic adaptive mesh refinement technique, which uh, the solver uh, refines the mesh uh, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, so to specify, usually the default value works fine, but in order to make sure that we achieve convergence, you can increase it to 15 to 20. And a maximum delta S, you can keep it as a default value. This is the difference between two consecutive paths, usually two S parameters. Um, if you make it a very small value, uh, the software will refine the mesh uh, more, which may not be required. Uh, so you can uh, keep the default value for this example. And then Click on OK. The next step, you need to specify the frequency sweep. Once you calculated all the parameters using the formulas, you can construct your geometry inside HFSS. Um, it's always best to fully parameterize your um, model during the construction to uh, be able to do parametric studies and optimization in the future. To check all the variables and the parameters that you added to your geometry, uh, if you click on the design type in the properties window, you would see the list of all the variables with the specified values of each. In this design for the substrate, I have assigned FR4 uh, material with um, relative permittivity of 4.4. And for the ground and the uh, patch element to represent the material, I'm using the finite conductivity boundary condition. For the excitation of the feed line, I'm using a lump board that extends from the signal conductor to the ground plane. So since Antenna is an open radiation problem. So we need to always define a radiation box. In order to add that, go to uh, HFSS in the menu bar, uh, model, and create open region. You can uh, specify the operating frequency at 866 megahertz and assign type of boundary condition. Um, so in this example, I'm using the radiation boundary condition and the radiation box will be generated. And, and if you check in the boundaries, you can see that the uh, open radiation boundary condition is assigned to it.
Uh, the next step would be setting up the uh, solution. So uh, by adding the solution setup, you need to uh, define the center frequency at 866 megahertz and uh, in order to make sure that the solution converge increase the maximum number of passes to 20 to make sure that the solution converges once everything is done you can go to simulation tab and validate your design to make sure that everything has been set up correctly and uh, click on Analyze All to run the simulation. Once the simulation is completed, inside the Message Manager, you can see the normal completion of the simulation on the server. And uh, uh, the next step would be creating some uh, reports. So in the Project Manager from the result, Right click on the result, create terminal solution data and rectangular plot. So we are going to plot the S parameter S11, select terminal S parameters for the category and S11 plot and in DB and click on new report. This will generate the S11 plot for you. Um, if you want to add marker at uh, the operating frequency so right click and uh, click on marker add marker and you can place the marker at your operating frequency and check what is the value of s11 as you can see here we have the perfect response for our design at our operating frequency if you want to make changes to the the line the plot, you can change the color to blue if you want to change the line width. If you want to change the line style to different uh, line types, so dot, uh, solids, and so on, uh, you can uh, do some editing. So if you would like to change the name of your plot, you click on the uh, the plot itself. Uh, you can change the name. So uh, check mark this uh, specify name in the properties window and change the name to S11. And if you would like to change the plot name, you can change the the font size. You can um, edit. Uh, the plot title so this is s parameter the x and y axis and so on also you can uh, plot the antenna gain so if you click right click on the result and create far field report and go to the 3d polar plot select antenna gain total gain and click on new report this will create the antenna gain. As you can see here, we have the maximum in the upward direction. Um, if in the project manager window, if you right click on the gain plot and uh, click on show in modular window, and if you go back to your design, you can um, uh, do the plot overlay so you can see the um, the antenna gain uh, plotted on your antenna element for your visualization. You can also create a 2D report of your uh, radiation by right click on the result, far field report, and click on radiation pattern. If you go to the family, so you can plot uh, your uh, radiation pattern at V0 and uh, 90 degrees. So you can select any value of V0 and 90. And go back to the trace and click on new report. 
So this will create the phi at 0 and 90 uh, degree. Also, if you would like to plot the electric field on the antenna element, so you can uh, uh, do the field overlay. So if you want to hide this antenna again, you can uncheck it from the modeler window. To plot the fields, you need to highlight the ground plane as well as the antenna element by holding the control key. And in the project manager, in the field overlays, you can click on plot fields, electric field, and magnitude of electric field. Make sure that it's on your operating frequency and click on OK. This will create the electric field on your plot. If you want to have a better view, you can change it to logarithmic scale. In order to see the electric field, you can also create animations here. Expand the electric field and I click on animate. And uh, this will show how the radiation works from your antenna element. As you can see that we have the maximum radiation at the edges. I would like to thank everyone who has joined this session. We are on all the social media. We are on LinkedIn, Facebook. You can find us at Fluid Codes and stay connected to us. Thank you.